I have two more minutes, and I'm going to take them, don't you worry. On page 304, please open your textbook, page 304. Page 304, you will see a table of different moments of inertia of objects. You will see we have derived uh, one, two, three, four of them. These are the four that you are responsible for being able to derive. You should have the one for a thin hoop memorized. That one's very simple. Really, you should have that one memorized. The other ones, you are responsible for being able to derive these moments of inertia. Please do not memorize these moments of inertia. They will be given to you if you need them. One last piece, you need to be able to know and compare moments of inertia from one object to another. That is simply how far the mass is located from the axis of rotation. We'll certainly talk about this more, don't you worry. Have a beautiful day. One thing I did say is that you should be able to compare different objects to one another. For example, we have a thin hoop, we have a solid sphere, and a hollow sphere. You should not have to look at the table to know which one has the largest moment of inertia. Who could tell me how, looking, without looking at the table, without even knowing what the equations are, knowing how moment of inertia is, what the equation is for the moment of inertia, which one has the greatest moment of inertia? Garrett. Probably the solid ball. Why? Because it has a greater resistance to, so it's like the inertia would be greater. So let's, re let's return to what is moment of inertia? What was another phrase for moment of inertia? Well, no, rotational mass, right? So if you start there, which makes it a resistance to an angular acceleration. So the question is, which one has the greatest resistance to an angular acceleration? Remember, it has to do with where the mass is located. So the mass, the farther the mass is from the axis of rotation, the larger the moment of inertia. So which one? has the mass farthest away from the axis of rotation? This one. This one has the most mass farthest away from the axis of rotation. So this one has the largest moment of inertia. What about these two? The solid versus the hollow one. Which one's going to have a larger moment of inertia? The hollow one. The solid one has a whole bunch of mass concentrated right in the middle here. But the hollow one has less mass concentrated in the middle and more mass concentrated on the outsides. So the hollow one has a larger moment of inertia. So this is the largest, this would be second, and this would be the smallest moment of inertia. So you need to be able to compare different shapes and understand how those work. So is it just a, like a ratio of? It's always, it has to do with mr squared, the mass times the radius squared, and some sort of fraction thereof. With the exception of the, the um, long thin rod, which was ml squared. <laughs>